Okay, so speaking of failing, failing well, managing risk in high performance applications. Um, I am highly qualified to speak on this because I fail all the time. My goal is only ever to not fail the same way twice. Um, so, yeah. So I'm Allison. Uh, this part isn't really that important. I'm the CTO, CSO for Noise. Uh, we work with really big brands. Uh, managing risk is a big part of what I do, and risk management doesn't have to be boring. In fact, if you're doing it right, it's really interesting. So risk is not bad or good. It just is. And it's going to exist whether you acknowledge it, whether you're aware of it, or not. Uh, the way that you prepare is by understanding the risk and by weighing that in. It is not bad, it is a tool. <laughs> so, one example of risk is third-party dependencies. APIs, uh, software as a service, platform as a service. Anytime you've got stuff that isn't yours, that is a risk. Uh, application security. Everybody, every time I talk about risk, people assume that I'm talking about hackers. And yes, I'm talking about hackers, but only to a, a small degree. Uh, you know, XSS, CSRF, SQL injection, all of these things are real threats and they are real risks and you need to acknowledge them. Uh, application performance, coding errors, technical debt, bad queries, cache failures. This, <laughs> I just got through this, this is hell. It's absolutely awful. Um, coding errors can bring an entire cluster down. You can't, you can't throw more servers at it. It's not gonna solve your problem. Uh, server performance, misconfigurations, exceeding capacity, the ability to scale. Uh, hardware and network failures, they do actually still happen. When Amazon goes down, basically the entire internet is gone. Brittle deployment, this is something that we struggle with uh, as, as a, a DevOpsy person. Uh, deployment process is really, really important. And so problems during deployment can result in partially deployed code, uh, unreproducible, so if you need to deploy it again, it's a totally different process. You don't even know that it's failed, and that is a serious risk. Overly complex systems, also known as hipster bullshit. Uh, <laughs> When you've, got, when you've got a different server and a different layer for absolutely everything that your thing does, that's bad. That is a risk. So the very first thing that I do when I sit down uh, is, is I come up with a risk matrix. So every project, every time, no excuses. You want to deal with the probability of a failure, the impact of a failure, ways to minimize the probability, and what you do when that failure happens. You have to have that plan in advance. Uh, transparency, aka covering your ass. All stakeholders sign off on the risk matrix. That may mean your client, that may mean your executive team. Uh, it manages expectations well, and it gives you something to fall back on because you don't want to be in that position where you're trying to figure out what to do when something's failed, and that's when you need to panic and figure it out. Just because something has risk doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad decision. Risk is a tool. So calculated risks, uh, businesses do calculated risks all the time. There's a phrase in finance, your risk to reward ratio. These are the things that you need to be thinking about. Sometimes the risk is absolutely worth the reward, but you need to acknowledge and understand the scope of that risk before you can make that decision. Risk management is a team effort. Different perspectives can uncover more risk. Everybody on your team should be worrying about risk. Not worrying about, but considering it. A designer might come up with different risk that I never even thought about, because that's not a world I live in. It also pre prevents the stigma of being that risk asshole that no one wants to deal with who always says no. <laughs> Uh, so, these are just some kind of general tips. Log everything. Absolutely everything. Automate log parsing to alert if there's trouble. Uh, monitor all the things. I mean, absolutely everything. Uh, if you've got a JSON request that needs to populate data, you should have a monitor on that JSON request and make sure that it's returning 200, that it's returning content at all. Um, so design your system with monitoring in mind. Make sure you can check that the cache really is working. Because how many times have you had a developer, no, no, it's totally fine, it's working. It's not working. Uh, so premature optimization, just say no. Uh, do not make overly complicated code to anticipate uh, problems. We, we just had a talk on prediction. You suck at it, stop doing it. Uh, get, get to know your users. User behavior, you will see over time by looking at all of the logs and all the monitors and all the things. If something changes, there's probably a reason for it. Uh, and this is a personal philosophy of mine, fewer moving parts is better. It's just, uh, it's just, it just makes sense. When you have super complicated systems trying to figure out when one of these layers in this giant layer cake is failing, figuring out even what layer that is becomes very difficult. You don't actually even know where to start. So, thank you. <laughs>